Good morning. Welcome to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. I want to thank you so very much for joining me and listening to my weekly devotional today. You may be watching or listening on Speaker or Facebook or YouTube. Wherever you are, we're glad you're here. It's an honor and pleasure each and every week to give you my thoughts on a Bible teaching to build you up in Christ. Before I begin my opening monologue, I want to say good morning to Donovan. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Good morning. It's uh, another beautiful day that the Lord has created. A Amen. heat wave is coming, 111 degrees for the next four to five days. Five days. Yeah, five days starting on Thursday. Starting on Thursday. Yeah. Starting on Thursday. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a hot one. So yes, be the prepared, devil's on folks. a rampage. <laughs> be, prepared, be prepared. You had a nice weekend? Oh, it was a great weekend. Good. Um, I, I did SeaWorld yesterday. Uh, oh, uh, you did SeaWorld. Good for you. Uh, uh, under the military plan. So it Good. was uh, free tickets that were giving to the military. And Praise I took God, back. man. Did you enjoy yourself? I did. Oh, that's awesome. That's, great. that's awesome. Okay, let me get started on my opening thoughts for today. You know, I, I know Donovan realizes it, but you know, as I was going through this, we are in our 23rd week yeah. of this podcast series entitled Excellent. End Times. So I'm going to ask, I'm gonna ask you um, a question, Donovan, just to think about it. Have you learned much from this series? I've learned a lot. You've learned, and I know our audience has too, because I've seen some of the comments mm-hmm. and some of the things that uh, you you send to me. I'm hoping that this series has not only enlightened our audience and yourself and all of us really, mm-hmm. but also inspired you to have a better understanding on what the Book of Revelation is all about and what exactly it means when you say the wrath of God. Mm-hmm. He's not an angry God. He's a merciful God, but he's also a just God. So it's really giving us a good idea of what the future is like from the eyes of the Lord. So in the last few weeks, we've covered the first two sets of judgments. It started off with the sealed judgments back in Revelation chapter 6. Then we took a few weeks, dove into the trumpet judgments of Revelation chapter 9. And of course, if you've missed any of these podcasts, Donovan, Mm -hmm. tell the audience on where they can find any of these archive podcasts on YouTube. Yes, uh, on YouTube, go to News from the Edgemont, one word, and all Pastor Don's shows from the very beginning are there, and they are archived for you. All you got to do is scroll down, and and from News from the Edgemont on YouTube, you can see every Every single one of our podcasts, either the video or the audio portion, uh, or both. Yeah, they're both. They're both on YouTube. So please, if you've missed any of them, check it out on YouTube. Mm-hmm. But now we're in the second half of the seven-year tribulation period, most notably known as the second half of the time of Jacob's trouble. Mm-hmm. Now, at this point, the devil has been cast out from heaven, from Revelation chapter 12, and now he knows that his time is short. Now, I want to remind you what the goal is of Satan at this time. God made a covenant with Abraham back in the book of Genesis that the Israelites will be his chosen people forever. Now, this was a unilateral contract. Now, I know, Donovan, you know what a unilateral yeah. contract is. That doesn't mean, it means that both sides do not have to comply. Right. Unilateral means that only one side needs to comply to keep the mm-hmm. contra- contract enforced. Mm-hmm. So if the Jews disobeyed, the contract still enforced just by the nature and the name of our Lord. The con- covenant is enforced only through God. So from Satan's point of view, the way that he can win against God is to seek and destroy all the Jews to prove to the world that God is a liar and does not keep his covenants to the world. If this happened, think about this for a second. If, if, if Satan is successful in wiping out all the Jews before the end of this world, then basically God is not true God and people will worship Satan going forward. And that's exactly what he wanted from day one. Mm-hmm. So when he is hurled down to this earth, Satan desires two things. One, to be worshipped. Mm-hmm. And two, To kill every Jew and even all believers of God, um, Mm -hmm. uh, born-again believers from the tribulation period, believers in God. If he can accomplish this, then in his mind, he wins. I guess that's one way. Wait, I just got four words to say on that. Good luck on that. that. (laughs) (laughs) So now we come to the third set of judgments of God that is known as the bold judgments. are completely outlined in the book of Revelation, chapter 16. Now, we're pretty much at the climax of God's wrath here in this book of Revelation. These bold judgments is what I like to call God's final episode to the world. 
So when I was preparing this podcast, it made me think about final episodes, Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to popular television shows. Now, there was a poll taken a couple years back to rank the top 50 final episodes of long-running TV shows of all time. So I want to test you, Donovan. Have a little fun here this morning. Mm -hmm. I want you to guess right now. Just think about it in your mind. I know you've Mm -hmm. watched some TV, especially some of the older shows. What would you think is the top five final episodes of TV shows all time? And then let's compare it to the results of this poll. And I want your cheat so little right. My sheet's right here. Okay. Right. So, you kind of thinking of yeah. your top five? Uh, number one, man. No, no, shh. Oh, Can't tell me. I want to tell you, man. You're just okay. going to tell me if it matches up to you. So, let me see how, how you, what you're thinking, okay. and the audience, you want. I want you to be thinking this as well, how it matched up to this poll. Number five, The Shield. Really? The Shield, the main wow. character, ends up going to prison. Uh, the end up, ends up not going to prison, and we see him behind a desk working for the uh, uh, for wow. the FBI. It was so popular because it was such an interesting twist mm-hmm. to what everybody's expected to happen on the final episode. Number five, most watched, The Shield. Number four, Saint Elsewhere. What? Saint Elsewhere, fourth largest audience of final show. This final show showed the autistic son of the main character looking into a snow globe, mm-hmm. and we really... Really? Cheers okay. was number two. First question everybody wanted to know, did Sam and Diane, who are the staples right. on the show, together. did they ever leave the bar to go yeah. live in mm-hmm. L.A.? Mm-hmm. Well, of course, we knew from the final episode the answer was no. Mm-hmm. They end up coming back to the Cheers bar and become reunited with their friends. Great, touching show. And number one, literally, by far, the number one final episode TV show, long-running TV show, not even close, MASH. MASH. MASH, number one. If you've never saw, this is the the one. Huh? The end of the war. I'm telling you, this is the only one I've really saw, and I've seen it many times. Mm -hmm. The MASH cast finally leaves Korea to go home. Mm -hmm. A very emotional ending when the main character, Hawkeye, leaves by helicopter and the words goodbye Mm -hmm is basically a range on the rocks in the ground. Yeah. You know, they still show reruns, and I still watch that yeah, show. Yeah, me, me, me TV. And every, and on me TV, yeah. exactly. Well, the point of this podcast introduction is that each one of those endings to these te- uh, television series have one thing in common. They're all fictional. Mm-hmm. But the greatest and most amazing ending ever in the history of the world will happen in the yeah. book of Revelation when Jesus comes back to this earth as prophesied for the second time. And as you know, folks, this is not a movie. This is real stuff. But as I've already forementioned, before Jesus comes back, there is one last set of judgments on this earth to discuss. And of course, as I mentioned, it's the bold judgments. But before we look in detail to these last set of judgments of God, I want you to think about all of what we have discussed in the the few weeks past But I want you to look at it from God's point of view. Many of you in the audience listening or viewing this podcast are parents out there that can understand how God must be feeling right now after these first two sets of judgments. Now I want you to picture right now in your mind yourself with your teenage child who's acting extremely rebellious. We were just talking about about this before we started the show. You try everything in your power to help them see the wrongs of their behavior, but they continue to ignore you. So what do you do? What does every good parent do at that point? Well, you start taking away some of their privileges. What you start with is maybe a cell phone. Then you may (laughs) elevate it to taking away their curfew or even more stricter punishment like grounding or no electronic devices. Mm -hmm. But your goal through all of this discipline Mm -hmm. is for that teenager to repent and turn back to your authority because moms and dads truly know best over their teenage kids. Like I have said to my kids many times, and Donovan, I'm sure you said it to your kids as well. Several I, times. I've been your age before, but you've never been mine. Right. Trust me, I've made the tons of mistakes. So has Donovan. <laughs> yes. We have wisdom to, just to give to our kids. There's wisdom that comes with age. But there comes to a point when the rebelling is not ending... And there's nothing more that you can do to change that attitude or behavior of your rebellious teen. 
that means that your child may have to face even more severe consequences for their consistent bad choices. It is at this point that you have, give, you have to give the situation completely to God for protection. For an adult child, it may be kicking them out of the house or in order for them to mature and grow up. Mm-hmm. For a younger teenager under the age of 18, it may be sending them out to boarding school or reform school or even more drastic, a boot camp military for teens camp. or even a military camp. It is not what you want. You want your child to be with you. You want to have that loving, mm-hmm. um, that loving uh, relationship, but with free will comes consequences to bad behavior. Folks, this, if you can picture that in your mind, this is the setting for the verses of Revelation chapter 16. God has given these earth dwellers every opportunity for them to think, for them to seek him, excuse me, and repent of their evil. As I said before, he could have destroyed this earth at a twinkle of an eye, but that was never God's goal from the beginning. He wanted all people to repent and surrender to him. But unfortunately, these earth dwellers continue to refuse and they continue to curse God. We read about it last week at the end of the trumpet judgments in Revelation chapter 9. So these are the last judgments, the last wrath of God against these evil, evil doers. doers. Correct. We'll take a look at the first two bold judgments next week. Now, you may want to fasten your seatbelts because it's going to be a wild ride. But in the meantime, our job is to continue to witness the good news of the gospel message to all people. Because as we have said before, we do not want any of our loved ones to experience these horrible judgments of God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, first of all, we thank you again for your word. In a small way, Lord, we can understand how you might be feeling in dealing with rebellious people who continue to be defiant to your authority. Lord, you may have given ample warnings in wanting all people to repent of their sins. But Lord, since we all have free will, then we choose to either accept your gift of salvation through Christ or reject it. Lord, help us to be the beautiful feet of your word, to witness to all people that have not surrendered to you. Lord, we are your instruments to be used as living testimonies to your awesome love, mercy, and grace. Lord, we love you and give you glory in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, that was a different type of opening monologue. I actually did not get into any of the judges. But what I wanted to do is get you in the mode of understanding. I still get comments of people still not understanding the wrath of God. Still not understanding how a loving, forgiving, merciful God could do any of these judgments to his people. But once you realize it is no different than being a parent to a rebellious child, then you start getting a better understanding where it is from God's point of view. You know, God is loving. He is merciful, but he is just. And justice without consequences is no justice at all. So it gives you a better understanding of what where God is as we go through these bold judgments starting next week. So I pray that you've enjoyed this time. We're going to get into it next week. And I pray that this continues to inspire you to, to uh, witness the word of God. And again, I want to thank you all. Reflections Ministry Facebook page is doing well. If you've never heard of it, uh, Please click on it. It's called Reflections Ministries on Facebook. We're doing well. We're getting closer to 2,000. Yeah, 2,000 followers. And I thank you again for sharing uh, the devotionals, the podcast, and everything else on that page. But can please continue to do that. You know, our goal from the very beginning on this page was to, to give people the gospel, give people the good news each and every day between Monday and Saturday. And so far, it's been such a blessing to so many people. Thanks to you sharing this page to all your contacts. So, thank you so much for listening to my opening monologue, and God bless you. God bless you. All right. Uh, this week has been, has been really great, and um, you know, it's funny that that you talk about the um, understanding God's wrath and how He could be a certain way. Because there are, are there are a lot of people out there um, that think that God is just loving. I mean, He is loving all the time. Sure. However, like you said. Uh, justice without consequences is no justice at all. Exactly, and he's given us a choice to either follow him or not follow him, and he gives us chance after chance after chance. But there's going to come a day where he's going to say, "Well, this even, is it. even as a parent, both of us are parents. Sure, 
I never enjoyed disciplining our kids. I mean, yeah. we all rather go to go to the beach, go right. to the park, and enjoy each other. But there's there, you have to. It's part of life. They not they're not going to learn without it. Right. So again, that's what God's saying. You know, here I've got I've got the perfect solution right here. All you have to do is take it. Parents do that all the time. Mm-hmm. Just listen to me, and you'll be fine. And unfortunately, a lot of kids, just like the earth dwellers, just don't listen. Yeah, and, and the biggest difference is, you know, sometimes, like, you know, your kids are coming in, and you tell them how to do it one way, mm-hmm. and they find another way to do it. Oh, okay? yeah. The difference with us and God is, he says, this is the way. And, and there is no other way. There is no other way. Right. Exactly. So you I know, wanted to clarify exactly. that. Exactly. When it good. comes to God, he's a perfect God. Yeah. And his ways are perfect ways. And everything, his road is the perfect right. road. So, yeah, alternatives don't, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't matter don't work. because it is all about the Lord. Exactly. You know, um, it, it's almost like our kids now. You can't go to the kids where, you know, like, you know, they're, they're really good with phones and these mm-hmm. PlayStations and whatever they're doing. Ah, oh, you guys, you don't know what it is. Uh, no, God is, this is what I want. And that's the way it is. Exactly. And you know what? And this is the way it is. This is the way it's right. always going to be because God is God and we are not. Right. And his ways are and right. And he, he even clarifies. He says, I am the beginning. Mm-hmm. Alpha. I am the, the omega, Alpha and the omega, omega. The beginning and the, the end. end. Yeah, exactly. And this is Absolutely. how I want. Exactly. That's, that's from the book of Revelation right. chapter 1. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. So, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, you're quoting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're quoting Revelation. Good it's, for it's you. rubbing off on me. Good, like that. good for you. So, um, but uh, I had a question that came to me, an email that came to me uh, last Thursday. And the question was, now that this uh, golf course program has passed and, mm-hmm. you know, the church is now, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's, you know, this is actually going to happen. A lot of people are wondering what can they do to prepare or to help in making that. I mean, are you right now involved in? Because I, I know you got a lot in your mind, Pastor Don. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, you are the uh, the leader, so that that, that comes with the job. Mm-hmm. Are you formulating a plan to um, you know get this thing off the ground and get yes. going right now? So, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, the, the, the answer to that question is yes. yes. See, right now the. Um, the uh, the golf course owner who also owns basically the uh, the uh, restaurant mm-hmm. and also the clubhouse they're right in the middle of getting all their permits together mm-hmm. they're continuing the work on the golf course but they're working diligently on the clubhouse and the restaurant and of course that's the main part for us because we're going to basically be in that clubhouse that's where the service is going to be so I, I'm waiting about twenty to thirty days for them to get their permits to get things going to start the renovation mm-hmm. uh, they already started the renovation on the parking lot so things are starting but yes we have a plan uh, that we're going to go in there and um discuss terms Terms. Uh, the terms will be very very simple we're going to be meeting on sunday mornings Mm -hmm. Uh, we got to discuss cost we got to discuss possibly children's ministry where they'd be able to um take the children uh talk about the um how we're going to how we're going to arrange it with the uh, restaurant and the patrons of the restaurant Mm -hmm. and a lot of little details like that but the timing is everything, as you know in business. Timing is everything, and the timing is not right yet for us to make those negotiations happen. Mm-hmm. So what I need all of us to do, including our audience and us, mm-hmm. is, we, is we need to pray for success. We need to pray that the, the owners, who's a great guy, Mark great guy. Stevens is a great, great guy, guy, and yeah. of course Eric is a great guy, that they will see the vision of what the benefits are of having a God-centered church as part of this project. Right. I mean, you can't have a better audience than having God in the center of it. I mean, nothing nothing makes it more successful than God being right there in there. I just pray that they see that. And they see that because if they get to a point that they're going to want to charge us way too much, then, it, then I, there's no way that we could possibly do that. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, with a lot of things that we offer, especially from the show, and other things that we can offer through the patrons come, uh, going to the restaurant, I think that we'll be able to come up with a great... Sure. Great negotiating um, cool. contract. And then we'll be able to go forward with the church. The church um, is still planned on the end of the year, pretty much when they open the golf course and when they open the clubhouse and the restaurant, that the church, the pre-launch services will start around that same time frame. So right now it's just prayer. Sure. Uh, probably towards about the end of July is when I'll have my initial meeting to lay out some mm-hmm. of the terms and, and just get some feedback. And then probably the negotiations part will probably be next month. Okay. And then I will, of course, always let the audience, let, of course, Don will be a part of it. So we all let us all know where we're at, you know, what the status is, and exactly what we need going forward. Okay, great. Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are, are most likely interested in, and it's, you know, and this is just human nature. Uh, they want other people to do the hard part. 
Oh yeah. And then <laughs> once that's done, everybody jumps on board. I'll be here. <laughs> I'll, I'll be, be there. Right. Exactly. So and and, and hey, and we appreciate every. No, you, you know what? Do. I'll tell you, the greatest thing you could do is pray. Right. Because if, if God's in the center, God's going to make it happen. He's going to open up every road. He's going to make this thing successful. It's it's all in the Lord's hands. So if you're praying for that success for this, that is the greatest assistance that you could do for this project. Right. And and then last question I have for you. It's really not a question. It's really a statement. Uh, congratulations on a, a great uh, free agency. No, oh, LeBron. Yeah. You know, it's what, funny. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I, I know that's not part of the, the, you know, tr- the yeah. church thing, but you know, and I'm very happy to see LeBron. You know, I'm a huge Kobe fan. I've always mm-hmm. been a mm-hmm. little rivalry between yeah. Kobe and LeBron, mm-hmm. but I'll tell you, there's no question. You know, in today, LeBron is the greatest, not only the greatest basketball player, but the greatest athlete. I think in, in the history and the uh-huh. in the history of, of sports, sports, but. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do realize he's getting older, mm-hmm. and he's probably, he, he, he can't keep that same pace. I mean, right. he's not a machine, but I am excited that he's going to be wearing Laker purple and gold. I think that uh, just the excitement, you know, the you know what he brings. I mean, it's just amazing. The frenzy, the just right. it, it's just awesome. I'm a little concerned about some of these other free agent signings like yeah. Rondo and some right. of these other guys, but right. but you know what? Just having LeBron here, you know, brings hope. And it's so interesting how, you know, with Christ, there's hope. And then for basketball enthusiasts, <laughs> yeah. you know, LeBron yeah. brings hope to the fans. And, yeah, I'm yeah. very excited about it. Right. Just real quick, um, I don't think we're going to be making any championships in the next four years. But I don't think so we'll, either. We'll, we'll, we'll be back in the playoffs. Well, there is one thing. There are, you know, I, I Magic Johnson's a pretty smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. He really is a great businessman. Well, and he knows basketball. And, oh, he's, he's a really – he's signing everybody up to one-year deals, yeah. which is smart. Mm-hmm. Because if Kawhi Leonard is, is available, available next year – they team up with him. They give it to these one-year contracts. They can bring Kawhi in, and now yeah. they've got a a tandem. I think they got a super team. You got right. LeBron. You got Kawhi. You got a super right. and, team. And a couple of those young guys. Oh, and, yeah. And you got those young guys. Right. And those, for those that don't know, and those that are listening on the podcast, it goes against the word of God. But today, I want to talk a little bit about what's happening tomorrow. Everybody knows that tomorrow is the Fourth of July, and I want to wish everyone a happy, but more importantly, a safe. Fourth of July. You know, I, was, I did a little, uh, I was reading some polls out there, you know, where people love to watch fireworks from the Fourth of July. San Diego's beautiful to watch the fireworks out there. <laughs> yeah, San Diego didn't make my top didn't five. <laughs> You know, it's funny, and I was thinking, what would I, I, every one of these places that made the top five, I've seen fireworks, I'm telling you, they're all great, but number five was the beach. Beach, yeah. People love going to the beach and seeing, seeing fire. Number four was a game, baseball game, mm-hmm. angel game, Dodger game, whoever's in town type thing, they got an amazing fireworks show after the games, and then three, of course, Disneyland, yeah. you know, Disneyland, Disney. they do it every day, but okay. the fireworks show on the fourth is mm-hmm. spectacular. Number two is one that I've seen so many times, and you never get tired of it, is Big Bear. Big yeah. When they do the yes. Festival of Lights on yes. the boats um, on the water. Lake, 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 Lake Matthews. And, and no, 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 no. Yeah, and Big Bear. It's in, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, right, that's beautiful. A beautiful. Awesome. You talk about the lighting, the sky, clear yes. night. It's a beautiful. And the boats are down there rolling through. Yeah. Oh, I, so, I, I, I went there three years ago. It was, it was excellent. Yeah, I, I, I used to go almost every year just to see that because it's that good. But And then, of course, number one, where everybody normally goes to watch fireworks is the parks. parks they yeah. go to the parks and, you know, the parks that actually have the fireworks. But one of the things I think that people kind of forget, you know, when we have Fourth of July, we know it's called Independence Day, mm-hmm. and we know it's basically independent. Our country's being free, the freedom of our country. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't get into that. We kind of forget what these uh, holidays are all about. All we know is we have a day off, and we can enjoy a barbecue and <laughs> family it. and friends. Mm-hmm. But the one thing we need to realize is that freedom is not free. It is not free. And and as a as a veteran, as a man who's you know fought for this country for many many years, you realize this more than anything. But what you may not well Donovan probably has because he's a history buff what you may not realize is what these signers of the Declaration of Independence had to go through in order to be able to they, declare the independence of this country on the line I want to give you I want to just give you a little bit of history here I want to go back 240 <laughs> years or a, a, over 240 years to 1776 and I want to tell you a little bit about a few of these 56 men that signed the Declaration of Independence that literally made the 4th of July possible. Let me give you a couple names of who signed it and a little bit of their stories to realize that it wasn't, you know, a lot of people says, oh, just a bunch of rich aristocrats that signed it. No, there was a lot of sacrifice to get this done. Um, First one I want to talk about is a gentleman by the name of Thomas Lynch Jr. He signed that pledge of the Declaration of Independence. He was a third generation rice grower and aristocrat. He was basically a large plantation owner, but after he signed the Declaration of Independence, his health failed rapidly. With his wife, he set out to France to try and regain his failing health. Health, 
ship never got to France, never heard from again. He wow. died at sea within months after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Thomas McKean of Delaware was so harassed by the enemy that he was forced to move his family five times in five months. Yeah. He ended up serving in Congress without pay, and his family lived in poverty and in hiding right after signing yep. the Declaration of Independence. A couple more. Thomas Nelson Jr. of Virginia okay. raised $2 million on his own signature to support our allied troops, plus the French fleet, financially. After the war, he personally paid back the loans, wiping out his entire estate, mm. never reimbursed by the government. And in the final battle for freedom at Yorkstown, Nelson urged George Washington to fire on his own home that was then occupied by the enemy, right. Cornwallis. Mm -hmm. And Nelson eventually died completely bankrupt. Mm. Thomas Nelson Jr. pledged his life, his fortune, and his honor for future freedom. Last one, signer Lewis Moore saw his land destroyed by enemy forces and his family had to scatter all over the, this nation. Philip Livingston, another signer, died within a few months from hardships on this independence war. So a lot of people don't have the right idea thinking, oh man, those signers, you know, they just sat you know, in conference room and just signed and everything was hunky-dory. No, it wasn't like that at all. First of all, the fighting was fierce. It was absolutely a, a miracle how the, how the how the United States you know came out on top and that losing and, that, and losing and losing exactly battle after battle and it's amazing how God allowed us to win battle against the the Brits in that uh, in, 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 for independence mm -hmm. but it wasn't free mm -hmm. freedom is not free and then when you think about it in regards to freedom in Christ yeah. and we think wow those who have surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ you know now we're sitting so pretty knowing. That we're, our eternity is going to be in heaven with the Lord. But at what cost? Freedom was not free when it came to Jesus having to die on the cross for our sins. You know, John 8.34 says this, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Prior to my uh, giving my life to the Lord, I'm sure same with Donovan, mm -hmm. we were all chained up in bondage because of our sin. And we literally had no answer for it. We would live hopeless lives in our guilt and shame, slave to our sinful nature, absolutely nothing, no chance. That's what these signers of declaration meant. Just like Donovan just said, we were losing every battle. Every battle. It didn't look, mm -hmm. there was no bright light. It looked completely hopeless from that standpoint. Well, that's exactly how it is for us before we gave our lives to the Lord. We may have been living a great life, but there's something missing. Something empty within us. And that's what it that's what we didn't have that freedom. Did not have that freedom that we now have in Christ. You know, if you go if you turn to First Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter six, verse twenty, it says it very, very succinctly right there. You were bought at a price, yes. and the price was huge. The price was what Jesus, Jesus had to endure on the cross and even put God has blessed us. Mm -hmm. It's always going after that next, next new thing, thing. Mm -hmm. that next bigger thing, the bigger home, the bigger car, the bigger boat, the mm -hmm. bigger everything. And we are constantly in bondage because of debt or in bondage because of stress and anxiety because we are putting all of our, our thoughts and all of our attention on the things of this world and there is no dependency on Jesus Christ. And what I want to tell you today for, in regards to tomorrow, Independence Day, you know, July 4th, is that we can have every day of independence, every day of freedom within Christ when we surrender each and every day to the Lord. You know what? I'm going to give you a couple of verses that are just so awesome. And I just want you to think about this within your own heart. Romans 6.18 says this, You have been set free from sin and now you are a slave to righteousness. Mm. Righteousness in Christ. Now we bow down to Jesus Christ. We live for him. We are a reflection of Christ. And in that righteousness, we have freedom in everything that we do. So I want to ask you a few questions today. And I just want you to think about it. And I want you to think in your own heart, is, am, I, am I describing you as we come upon Independence Day tomorrow? Are you allowing the stresses and anxiety of this world mm -hmm. to take away the freedom you, you enjoy in Christ every day? Are you allowing yourself to become so busy with the things of this life that it is taking you away from enjoying Christ 
in your private time? Are the shackles of your past sins weighing you down that you cannot consistently enjoy the freedom you have as a child of God? Are you feeling the love of God in your heart? Or is the busyness of the world taking that away from you? Are you truly casting all your worries and anxieties on God so that you can feel that freedom of His comfort and peace in your life, no matter how difficult your circumstances are? Is life bringing you down when you're feeling trials and tribulations, or are you allowing God to bring you up and give you that freedom in your heart? Two more. Are you free to enjoy God's creation every day? Seriously, think about it. Do you praise the Lord for the assurance of knowing that you will be with Him for eternity in heaven? Do you take the time to think about your eternal future with Jesus? Do you ever just go out in front of your house, in front of wherever you live, or to the beach, and just thank God for what He created? That's freedom. That's what freedom's all about. And lastly, are you living free in the hope, peace, joy, and comfort of God by allowing Him to lead you every day of your life. Folks, there is freedom. And a lot of people say, you know, I've tried, and it doesn't work. It does work. The way it does work is that you need to realize that John 80, John 8, verse 36, is real, is true, and it can be part of your life. If there's a verse that you'd want to memorize, it's John 8, 36. It's a verse everybody knows when I when you say it, but you don't know where it is, right. and sometimes it leaves. John 8, 36 says, so if the Son sets you free, you are free, free. indeed. If the Son sets you free, you are free. You don't need to live in any bondage. You don't need to have any stress or anxiety or worry. You can live in complete freedom, as we're going to celebrate tomorrow, the freedom of this nation, you can live each and every day in the freedom of Christ when we surrender each day to Him. Allow God to take away your anxiety. Allow God to take away your stress. And then live in the joy and contentment of what God has already given to you and what God has blessed you with. John 10.10 10 says this, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. That's what Jesus says. Your life is not doesn't end when you give your life to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and now you're just waiting to be with Him in eternity. You can have that fruit-filled life, that life of abundance today, right now, when you allow God to lead you in all things. So I want to encourage all my audience, encourage wherever you're going to be, but I also want you to realize that that freedom feeling that you want to have, you know, each and every day as you live, that can be accomplished in Christ. Yes. Amen. Yeah, so again, that just wanted to bring that up to you because uh, this morning, because I'm telling you, I love the 4th of July. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I see fireworks all the time, but it's something special about the 4th of July That's fireworks. Right. It's just it's just something special about it. I mean, I'm one of those guys, I'm blessed that at my house I can watch the, 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 the um, fireworks from there, and it's just it just amazes me because it brings me back to what this day is all about. Mm-hmm. But it also makes me think about how grateful I am to the Lord. That, you know, that same freedom that we're feeling today as a nation is that same freedom that I feel completely within myself, all because of Jesus and what Jesus has done. And I pray that that encourages you today to not only enjoy that on a one day, 4th of July, but each and every day allowing Christ to lead you in everything you do. He can take away those anxieties and stress, and He can let you live that life of fullness and abundance. Amen. Amen. Um I'm glad we got a little uh, a little bit about history because you got to understand when those people, um, founding fathers or what do you want to call them, uh, sign their names on there, you're basically signing a death warrant because in Britain, uh, the, he's right. Yeah, the uh, those patriots were known as terrorists. Exactly. And when you put your name on a document, and we know how the Secret Service, you know, it's almost like advertising. Hey, I'm the guy. You let them know exactly. I'm going to go get this guy and make his life miserable, or and chain him, or whatever. So that they, they took a great risk. Oh my gosh, it's tre- treason, yeah. tyranny right. against the establishment in regards to the English. English that yeah. it was all of that. They yeah. took huge risks right. to do what they did in order to make this country free. Mm-hmm. None of us really recognize that. that right? We just say, hey, you know what? Whatever, yeah, man. They, we they, live in a free nation. Yeah, they, they're sitting in a building and they're yeah. making all these decisions. No, and they're smoking their cigars right. and, having a, and having a cognac. Yeah, right. it didn't. No. work that way mm-hmm. and he's Donovan's exactly right they took a huge mm-hmm. risk death warrant. but it was Sign worth it because now we're enjoying the fruits of that exactly. you know type thing same things when with Christ 
we give our lives to Jesus. Jesus did it all as well. Mm -hmm. And it was a huge price. But now we get the fruits of that by living for him each day. Absolutely. And those, what a blessing. And those of us that have family members, and I don't know anybody in the United States that doesn't have somebody in their family that uh, served in the military or whatever. Yeah. That is a great calling if you were able to do that. And those that couldn't participate in the military and participated in, in other aspects by being a good citizen or uh, – you know, donating and, and becoming a positive part of society, that's a blessing within itself because even the Lord uh, said, pay Caesar his tithes and obey those laws. Amen. So. Amen to that. Yeah, I also want to, you know, even though there's not a Memorial Day mm -hmm. or Veterans Day type theme, mm -hmm. but still, it's the fighting for freedom. Yes. So again, I thank Donovan for his service and anybody else out yeah, there who, who basically who served in the military, in the wartime or not, mm -hmm. because that was a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that sacrifice is what the freedom is, what freedom is all about. It is that full sacrifice that you did on your, for your own, your own self and also your family mm -hmm. for us to be this freedom. And we thank you for and, that service. And, uh, Please remember, Independence Day, it's a great celebration, but it's also a celebration to remember those that made the ultimate sacrifice. Oh, my gosh, yes. So Absolutely. So freedom many. Freedom is not free. <laughs> freedom is not free. Somebody's got to fight. Somebody's exactly. got to do. A lot work. of blood, sweat, and tears to be able to enjoy the picnics, parties, and hot dogs, and whatever exactly. apple pie that we're going to have tomorrow. There was a lot yes. of blood, sweat, and tears for us to be able to do that, and we thank every one of those yeah. folks that sacrificed for us. Yeah, uh, but you know, it's funny that you said on, on your list of the top places – uh, fireworks in the Bay and, uh, and down in San Diego. That's a oh, – I went there. And, and, the, and the greatest thing was mm -hmm. I went three years ago and the fireworks uh, messed up. And so all the fireworks blew up at one time right oh, there on the barge. Had a big there. No, it was, in, it was at the barge. And it oh, was like serious? It was over in like five minutes. We were like, what happened? You know, Are you serious? And I'm not saying you want like bad things to happen, but you know, it was like a That's fluke a that, that happened. But it was a big explosion on that barge out there. Oh, it my was, gosh. It was unbelievable. Holy and, cow. And the, one, and the one in Big Bear, beautiful. Yeah, if you beautiful. can get to Big Bear. Yeah. It's packed, but it's worth it. Right. It's a beautiful, beautiful display. It's just, it's yeah. just really and, patriotic. And, it's great. And the good thing about Big Bear is there's certain like hiding spots that you can, if you know where they're at. Yeah. Great views. Well, I'll Great. tell you this: if you go on the opposite side of Big mm -hmm. Bear at Fonskin, mm -hmm. you know that area there. There's a lot of places, especially on the pier, mm -hmm. right there, right on the wall. A lot of places that you can see these yeah. beautiful, beautiful fireworks. Yeah. It's really but, great. But I'm going to say this: um, unfortunately. There are a lot of veterans out there that have PTSD mm -hmm. and things, and we have a lot of people that illegally shoot fireworks. I, I'm strongly going to say don't do that. And plus, you got to think about the animals that get freaked out. So, oh yeah, um, absolutely. If you have lost your animal or the animal has skidded off, please look at your local animal shelters. Mm -hmm. They might be there and take get, care of your and animals. just in case tag your animal with your information if you haven't done it already, so that you can recover your animal. Absolutely, after. take care of your animals because I know this. They're not used to that yeah. fireworks and their hearing is different than ours yeah. and it really freaks them it's out. So please make sure you take care of your animal. I don't, is Marino Valley, it's illegal fireworks, isn't it? Riverside County, it is illegal. That's what I thought. I thought all of Riverside, Riverside County is County, illegal. So right. please obey the laws, guys. And let's not do fireworks in areas that are definitely illegal right. to do that. But again, I just want to just reemphasize one more time, freedom in Christ. We have freedom in this nation. We can have freedom every day in Christ when we surrender each day to him. Absolutely. Um, Pastor Donald, one last question before we go. Why is it that we, I mean, it's obvious we're in the last days. Mm -hmm. What is it going to take for people to say, I mean, we can't wait to the last minute and talk about God as everybody's getting raptured. Oh my gosh, what am I going to... What do you think it's going to take for those of us to wake up and say, I'm going to accept the Lord into my life and, and be serious about... Uh, you know, following the Lord. Yeah, that's 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 the that's the sixty four thousand question. <laughs> because you know what, there's people I I I talk to people and it just breaks your heart that they've been praying for their family member, they've been praying for their best friend, mm -hmm. and they just don't see the light. And they, and 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 they're saying, "What, Pastor? What do I do?" Right. And the answer is, you just do what you're doing. You pray for that person. You continuously be a witness to them. See, a lot of people think when to be a witness, that means you got to quote Bible verses right, right. and you got to know the Bible scholar. Mm -hmm. No. Matter of fact, that's probably the most ineffective way to be a witness. You know right. the best way to be a witness? Live the life of Christ. Be that loving person, Beautiful. that serving person. Mm -hmm. Be that person that can have joy despite your circumstances. Be that person that doesn't have Thank stress you. in their lives. And people will come up to you and say, Donovan, how in the world, right. with all this going, going on, on and all this, how can you have so much joy? How I watched you, the Pastor Don show. <laughs> <laughs> how can you have so much peace when all your life, you know, there's so many things going on? And he can say one word, Jesus. Jesus. That is the greatest 
uh, witnessing way is by the way you live your life. So you don't have to, you know, quote all these verses. I mean, you can and they're yeah. effective. Mm-hmm. But if you live the life, you live as a reflection mm-hmm. of Jesus. You do what we talk about. When you're different and you've got joy, people want that. Right. People want what you have and they will ask you, how do you do it? And your answer is Jesus. I'll tell you, I've seen so many conversions based on someone living the life of Christ. So that's what I would recommend. Just keep living for Jesus every day and allowing Jesus to shine through you. And trust me, these people will see it. People watch. Mm-hmm. And, and people keep, are always watching. Mm-hmm. And they will get the, they'll, they'll start their understanding. And, and so basically you're saying keeping the faith and doing what God has said, this is the only way. Yeah. Living, living each day your life in Christ. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. When you've got Bill hanging up like everybody else and you have no way of paying him, how can you have joy in that? Because you know God's God's got your back. God will carry you through. God will figure it out. Sure. And that's that joy that people don't have when they don't live in Christ. And it's funny that you say that because I have a friend, real quick, I had a friend who was so faithful as a servant of God and she ended up losing her car and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she had no worry about it because mm-hmm. it, within like three or four months, she got a new, you know, I mean, a better car, a probably. Better car, right? Yeah, it was, it was, it was uncanny, and she had no worries. I mean, you know, economically, she had a, a challenge, whatever the deal is, but she didn't worry because she put her faith in God, and you know, not that God said, "Give me a, you know, mansion," but no, it doesn't, have, it doesn't work that way. But God rewards faithfulness. Right, right. God is faithful, and He rewards those that trust Him in all things. I, that story, He just said. I've heard so many of those. Exactly. Oh my gosh, lost things mm-hmm. and then didn't know what to do. And all they did was just continue to trust do, God. And do what they're doing. And in days, weeks, months, whatever, even years, mm-hmm. God provided something even greater. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, folks, it works. And I'm telling you, it's the greatest way to witness is the way you live. Amen. Amen. So first of all, so thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed not only the opening monologue to yeah. the bold judgments, but also the, the very short uh, July 4th message, Freedom in Christ. I really thank you for listening and then sharing, of course, Reflections Ministries Facebook page. Again, I want to wish you all a very happy and safe 4th of July. And again, please keep in mind and keep praying for all those veterans and people who did, who died for our, our freedom, keep them in your hearts and keep them in your prayers. And always remember the Lord uh, comes first. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great, great week. We'll see you again next week. Two plus two.